Hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my youtube channel and here in this playlist we are talking about a full stack mastery and in the initial videos we are covering about okay how to build the apis so we are using express js with simple javascript then express typescript then Ex express typescript with the mongodb and then we can just use nest js typescript and uh, and we will build the apis and then we will add the flavor of either react and next CS and build some of the the full stack uh, the platform full stack mon stack mean stack or these kind of full stack applications we are going to add in the same playlist so it's going to be very beneficial for those who are looking for learning a full stack um, development some people who are uh, good at front end development wants to learn how to build the apis and people who are already good at APIs wants to learn the React or these frameworks and building the components and all. So we are start. We have already started. I already covered two videos. In the last video, we covered how to baseline this repository using PNPM and NX. Now I will start creating these applications. Like simply, we are going to use Express.js. Okay, and uh, we are just going to get started by creating a simple simple quick and dirty express js application and build the apis with that okay so here we need to install the, the, the dependencies which we need so i will start adding them pnpm add so we are talking about express js so here we will add express body parser i will not be talking about very basics of the node.js i will just talk about the, the api development json web token i'm just installing whatever the dependencies i'm going to need so i'm just going to build a simple uh apis which will be simply okay how to do a simple authentication right so i will just need to do pnpm in it that gives me this package json and then i can add all these dependencies so you, uh, you can see i have added these five five dependencies mongoose for the database json web token once you do the login i should be able to return you the token express js is a node.js web framework right node.js api framework body parser to extract the data from the request body and the big crypt js to hash the password values because we are going to build uh, some authentication platform so if i talk about like what we are building here so we already discussed about uh, these things i will just cover them so this is the mono repo setup we already have and i'm talking about this particular application this is we are using simple express js so here we are using express js with now other dependencies obviously you need mongoose to deal with the database json web token to return the token once user is logs in right body parser and all if you want to just do a slight look on express js you can spend some time here like uh, how we are uh, because this was popular this is still popular how we build the apis okay and we just need to worry about this is the express you can create the next node.js apis using http server also but then you end up writing lots of code right here you can see here we are creating a simple express instance I'm just talking about this just to get started so everybody is on the same page here this is how we require the express create the instance of express then we start getting writing the routes app.get app.put app.post app.delete app.patch because using app instance this provides all these methods to create uh, and here we can just create a simple http server so if I just copy this and try to put in my code so here is this is what we are talking about source and i will just create a index.js file and here i will add all the dependencies this is a simple code i have written i mean this code everybody has seen this and if you are you already aware about this then you can skip this video this is just a simple express app what it is doing here you can just define the multiple routes app.get port post delete right so here i'm just saying okay give me the id app.put give me the id which you want to delete update the resource and then there is app.delete so i'm just adding a simple crud operation right and i'm writing these simple apis 
so express is just providing us uh, the app instance on that either we can use the express router or this app instance to build the apis get put post on this forward slash resource then under again you thought okay i need to also handle all these resources okay users give me all the users give me that particular user because we are writing a uh, rest api so users is the resource here users then you thought about okay i need to add a couple of more apis on the users i want to fetch the courses so i want to fetch the courses for this particular user so obviously you need to pass okay give me all the courses of this user so the, your resource url will be users id and the courses and here if you want to get a particular course then you will write something like this okay give me the course of this particular user id where course id is this similarly you can do the port you can do the do the delete so i mean express is a framework to write the apis but also we need to worry about okay how we are doing the resource naming right here users give me this particular user and from this user there are some courses i want to delete this particular course okay and when you run this you would be able to access all these apis so this is how we just create a simple express app and write a quick and dirty apis i mean obviously we should not be doing this there is a express generator also there which gives you simple skeleton i mean it's not like we are going to write code in just one file you can just use express generator that will give you app.js all the routes where you can define all your api routes user apis user courses apis and you can also write some handlers which are rendering the templates i will not go into this detail because obviously you already know all these things i'm not talking about express how to work with express okay so that is express web framework we are using in our code so what we are going to do we are using this express and then body parser to extract the payload coming in the request body json web token to create a token based on payload and the secret key mongoose is a o odm for the mongodb to query the mongodb database okay so let's get started what we are going to do we just create a simple apis login and the register api and let's see how we are doing it so you will understand okay this is how express work this is how you build the apis so that later you should be able to add a typescript and uh, the proper folder structure proper i mean we need to build a production ready application not by just writing whole the code in the single file you will you adopt a proper structure there we can write a controller services models uh, middlewares all these things because in express js its concept is same what all things you can do is you can create a so this is app.js or index.js is your main file after that you can do lots of things what you can do is you will you will be creating routes middleware right controllers services you can adopt a simple mvc style of writing the code by putting a proper structure in the and in the place and then you can also have a libs standard libraries which you are creating in the code that talks about okay logger so inside lib you can have logger monitoring tool and uh, logging monitoring tracing and some custom middlewares right authentication and authorization all these things can be there inside a lib okay so what we are doing we are creating express routes we can also express routes will talk to the controller so how this mvc works i will can use this particular section so this is you can see m model this you can see view this is your controller right i mean you, uh, by default using express you can also render the content from the it's it can act as a server side rendered component you can render the handlebar templates from the server side so those are the view templates i'm talking about i mean when you are building just a simple rest apis you don't talk about it like okay you are just returning the data in the json but you can return an event template also from the server side 
so this is your model which deals with your mongodb let me just move this to here to here this is view this is model this deals with your database okay so the view will send a request to the controller controller will just handle that with the model and then it will return the data to the controller and controller will return the, the data to the view so view will not be accessing the model directly model means the data orm logic odm logic you will be just talking to the controllers here in in our next uh, node.js code express code these are api routes right these routes will access the services and the model layer get the data and these models can also return the view templates so it's like a simple mvc folder structure you can also adopt with the express app okay so let's build a simple quick and dirty app simple authentication okay so to build this what all we need we need uh, to have simple apis i'm not going to create lots of folders here just index.js is also enough and here i will just require express i will remove rest of all the other code here i am just want to build a simple express app so here i will just add a body parser equal to require i mean this is a long time since i'm talking about express because now i think that if you are doing a javascript you already know how to build the apis okay here we can also import mongoose and require mongoose that is odm tool and then const jwt equal to require json web token okay we are not going to write lots of files so what i will do is i can just connect with the mongoose here mongoose.connect and i will just pass the url okay here i will i will decide what is the url i and i need to pass couple of options in the connections object that mongoose is asking so what we need to do is we already have a docker compose yml okay i think i already have this so i mean if you are beginner to the docker you won't understand it but docker compose yml we have written that is using this mongodb container and when i do docker compose up what it will do is it will give me the this mongodb container so you don't need to connect to some uh, mongo lts url from the remote or you don't need to install the mongodb on your local system this container is enough you can connect to this container on 27017 port and you have access to the mongodb database okay you can also access the container so little bit of docker knowledge should be good here i can attach shell and i can also try to see this is the mongodb container you can see this is like a simple docker container simple u12 machine you have created on your host machine okay maybe can i try to yes I, I i entered inside a mongo console you can see uh, and uh, i think there are there is a command show dbs okay then i can just use these commands to access the database okay i think there is a way of uh, creating a mongodb database that is like use test db okay it, had, it has created the collection then use users okay it's not good i can just uh, use test db dot users uh, i mean th there are some commands to create a collections mongodb is a no sql database here i'm just running the commands to access the database and here you can also sh do show collections that will give you all the collections which are there in the database so currently we are using test db okay then you can just do show collection or you can just use admin and you can see there is only one collection so there are some client tools available also using which you can access 
the mongodb database i can i will also talk about that client but this is only about how to access the mongodb console which is sitting in the container you don't need to do much for you don't need to do much for that so here we will pass the url now what my url looks like i can just pass my database i'm running it from the local host local host 27017 and let's say here i'm just saying is a users db or appropriate name is user management db right and this is accessing using 27017 and it is accessing through the container because the container is exposing 27017 port so we can connect to that using local host using local host system your laptop and there is a container running so there is a port mapping we already have we can access that container using 27017 whatever the port you are you putting here that kind of port you can use to connect to the mongodb so this is how we connect a mongodb i got the express instance and now i can just write the apis here i can just register some middleware okay what is the directory for my hope path okay like i want to create some static templates so i have dot use so there is a for there is a to counter to render the static content like images and html files or handlebar templates you can just specify what is your static directory and here i can just say path dot join from the current directory uh, you can just look into static folder okay not in the current directory we need to go one step back So we need to go we are inside a index.js so i can create a static folder here only in that case you don't need to do anything you can just pass a static so we are rendering the static content from here and then you can also use app.use i i am using body parser as a middleware so body parser.json this is this will help me to extract the the request body because you are hitting a post apis patch apis and all so till now we are good we have registered our api uh, registered all the all the middlewares so if you have any other middleware like you can just use app.use and write your middleware function so your middleware function takes three argument request response next and these middlewares execute every time for all the requests so this is like a custom middleware i have created this middleware will be triggered on all the api routes okay now i want to add some simple login api so what i will do is app dot post because we are we want username password from the user and here i can just use auth uh, login and what i'm expecting is i will just use async request response i'm expecting that payload is coming from the front end i mean from the the request and here i got the email email and uh, password we have or we can use the destructuring request dot body that is better i think and from request dot i am getting the username and the password let's say there is nothing like that okay and we are doing a registration also so we need to have a model because what model will be doing is that model will store the users model is a representation of your mongodb table so here i will create a folder model and inside that we can create a simple user user collection not table because here we are talking about collections we are using mongodb which is a no sql database user.js we will require a mongoose on the top and then we can define okay i'm using user schema equal to new mongoose m capital mongoose and here you can pass your schema mongoose dot schema and how your schema looks like so your first you have to create a schema and then create a model for that schema const model 
mongoose dot model and here you pass okay what is the schema name you want to give user schema and you pass the user schema which you have created first so schema is like what all attributes you need so i want to have a username there in the collection which is of type string so this mongoose provides because no sql is a unstructured collection you can put anything but here you can put some validations and some format and some structure which you want to have for your uh, collection data required true unique okay i want to have a unique uh, true because i don't want to have a duplicate usernames and then there is a password password should be a simple string right required true so this is how we are going to create a schema and that schema can be used in the model and then we will export this model module dot exports because we are writing uh, javascript module dot export model that's it so this is how we are creating model this model we need to use in the login api to check the data right so here how to access the model we can just go to the top and just uh, import const user equal to require and just pass your model so inside model i have a user that will give me the user model instance and here we are talking about simple login api so in the login api what we are going to do first is we need to check if this particular username exists in our uh, database or not so how we can do it we just need to play with simple mongoose commands await user dot okay i mean uh, it should automatically populate all these stuff i can just do a pnpm install at the root okay and then here what i'm doing is user dot find one I and mean, this is the problem with the javascript projects on the typescript projects you always get autocomplete so this is a user dot find one and which uh, mongoose version we are using mongoose 7.1 okay that has been upgraded a lot since i used last and here we'll just look at some uh, some implementation examples okay how we do the find how we are doing the operations so i will go to the the documentations and here we are creating a schema and then how we are doing a query so there are different mechanism dot find dot find one find by id and update and all so this is we are creating a schema and then because it provides both the implementation callback based implementations and async await right here we are writing async await so here it talks about okay how you define your schema which we have already done right we are just creating a schema and these are the different types this is okay lots of mongoose definitions this is how we are doing mongoose.connect and it also has a typescript support something like this when we are writing typescript we can create a type user and that user we can pass to the schema so that is like when you we write a proper production ready application there we are going to do so these are the queries these are the important ones right so we got the instance of model we can do delete many find find by id find one replace one find update many i mean these are really nice helpers and you can see the find one operation so this is the, here you are passing query okay and name dot last is ghost and uh, it is actually find one and what it is doing so it is find each person with the last name matching ghost selecting the name and occupation fields so what it is doing is you are doing a find one this is the matching criteria and once you got the results give me only these two uh, properties from the collections okay so this is how we are executing it so we can do the find one here we are just using a sync of it that's the only difference okay you can just do exec and then return the callback with the sync of it let's see how we are doing it so we can simply do is a user dot find one 
pass the criteria it will give you the user object so coming back here user dot find one by username so what we are checking do we have the username with this so here if user doesn't exist what we need to do we need to return so what how we can return response dot json response dot status that is also correct so what we are saying response dot status 401 or bad request so you, your credentials are not valid so how you try to deal with this not unauthorized we can just simply say is a bad request and json here you can set a message invalid invalid credentials passed or something like that so if user is found because uh, here we are writing login right so you can see this is the autocomplete code but here we are going to compare the password but should we do it like this first what we are going to do is we can simply do it with uh, because we are using brick crypt is equal so we are using bcrypt so bcrypt is actually used so we should have written the register first what it is doing is it will when you are creating a user what we are doing is we are just storing the bcrypt version hash version of the password using bcrypt.js and here we need to import a bcrypt in our dependencies on the top and what we are doing is bcrypt dot compare because we need to compare both the passwords because there is a login you can do compare comparison we are already using await so we can use compare and this is the password you are passing and then use user also as a password in the database and if this is true i mean i both are equal then we got what we need right we just need to generate the token using jwt so here we are going to create a const token equal to jwt dot sign this autocomplete is really smart and here i i can just pass the id user dot underscore id this is the id we have for the user and username you can pass user dot username even you can in, you can send an email i think there is a e username and password right we don't have email so these properties we are sending and then jwt.sign it takes payload and second argument is the secret so how how i will use is process.env dot I and mean, we can use uh, we, we should at least use the dot env module here so that we can get the values from dot env so here you can create a dot env because this is the secret using which you are creating uh, the token so inside this we can just have and we just need to get all the variables from this dot env also into our code so what we can do is we can use dot env module right and then we can just do dot env config that will populate all the variables in the process dot env so this is how we will get the secret and this is simple login so once you do the login what we can do is we are just, just generating a token so once you have token available what we can do is return response dot json status code is 200 sorry response dot status and here we can send a json message which contains the token so status okay and we can just pass access token is token so this is the response we can return if these are equals otherwise we already know what we need to send invalid username password 400 invalid username or password you should not tell the end user that, that your username is wrong or a password is wrong one of them is wrong user needs to correct okay a simple api so let's try to run this if it really works so we can add a start command we don't have much of the code so i will just do something like this start quick and dirty node where is our root file src 
index.js how to run this i hope everybody knows right npm run start right so we'll go to this application or we are using an x console that should also give me something okay select workspace okay i need to provide a proper uh, scope also so that we can use this in the package json scope is let's say here we can use tk sharma simple express auth app and that i should see in the console when i need to reload it somehow it's not showing all the applications okay so for now how we do it we can go to this directory cd apps express.js auth apis and we can just do npm run start simple and here we have index.js is running so what we need we need uh, to have mongodb up and running let's say you are passing a wrong url or something so what is the error it is throwing us path is not defined okay something we are missing so i will try to import the path that path variable is missing off from the top so i can just do path equal to require path that's it so we added the path i will try to restart or start again we can use a node mode port is not defined that is also correct so here we can do is a process dot env dot port if port is not specified is start the api zone 3005 now at least it will not throw error for the port something else port is not defined where is this port okay i got it here also use the process dot env dot port and we are getting it from here so inside env i can say port is okay 3005 here we are using 3005 so that's good so what we need to do is we need to use a dot env module so let's explore it dot env so dot env module helps us to populate the data from your dot env to dot env config so i will just add this dot env in this uh, repository in this application we will do it pnpm add so i will just do pnpm add dot env okay <clears throat> and then you just need to load the config at the root i mean you can also print this it will give you all the configurations from your code i will go to the root top of this and if you try to run this again same command you can see your variables has been populated here uh, whatever is in the process.env even there are some system environment variables that are also here and whatever the variable you set okay you set we set the port and the secret right so these values are here <coughs> okay so what we need to do is we need, i mean there is a mongo connection error let's fix this because i know i have seen this mongo parse error when you are trying to connect to a particular database so let's see this so all these uh, mongo db connection options you don't need like these because that needs to be supported by your mongo db container so i will just remove them we can just use new url parser and i can see my apis are running initially when you are learning and things you can just use node mode so when you change the code automatically it will reload and it will restart your node.js app you don't need to cancel it again and then start the uh, application again okay okay so this is our auth app now we can also access this auth apis let's first uh, add the register api okay let's uh, build a simple register api so this is app.post we will just copy this i will keep it lower and so we can see the whole view of the code 
app dot login similarly i can just create another api that talks about api login and then there is an api register that will also take a payload so what payload will contain is username and the, the password password we can create an alias for this is plain text password so this is the plain text password we are getting from the ui and uh, we can use the validation libraries for now what we will do is let's say if you are not passing the username and type of username is not string type of username not equal equal to string that means pad request right we can use this and i can say invalid payload user will understand okay username is required and i'm not passing it correctly so i need to go back and correct my stuff so this is the password uh, or the type of this is not equal equal to string then also i need to go back currently in the modern solutions we can use a class validator joy jord all these libraries to validate all those things you can also validate the length you can type uh, regex pattern and all and here we will try to do it so here we are doing try catch i will remove the existing code which we already have so what we need to do is i will just create a user const uh, response and we can just use await user dot this is a user model dot create and you can pass both the things username and the password so for that we before that we can actually create a bcrypt version of the password const password equal to await bcrypt dot hash this is the password and you can just pass plain text password and pass the salt value and you got the password now i got the hash version of the password i can just pass the username and password i'm safe i created a user so if user is created then we can just send the response back and here i can just return response dot status 201 because we are creating resource dot json message okay user has been created otherwise let's say if there is any error comes while doing this stuff because username is username is unique so there can be an error thrown by uh thrown by mongodb you, you can see there is already error code this is i think uh this is i think some plugin is doing it for me and here i can just say i mean i don't want to see the ai and chatbots are writing the code without humans here we can just say response.json so what is the error we can send here well i can just send a 409 there is a conflict message resource or user already exists with this username you can pass the username also whatever you are passing so this is in this case otherwise we can just uh, throw error okay, okay i can just send a response dot status 500 dot json dot send that's it i mean in the average case and uh, the worst case i will just return 500 so this is a my simple register api now it's time to test it I can just send the response object back no no response contains the hash password so let's try to do it something like this we can send a user object so here i can send id response.id and then username response dot username that's it so now let's test it so this is our simple api our api is running on 3005 you can see and uh, here 
I can try to pass the register, right? So I'm trying to create a user, let's say. User already exists with this username, hello. Or you can just send an unprocessable entity user. We are not able to create a user instead of telling that user already exists. So we are sending a 409 conflict. That's correct. So here, let's say I'm creating a username with user one and user is, has been created. I can just try to do the login with this username and password. And I got the, you can see it is creating these tokens. So it's like a very simple basic uh, auth implementation we have done. I mean, you might have already know okay, this is how it works. It's not uh, some biggie we have done. But the end to end express app with the two different routes using bcrypt.js and a mongoose to read and write to the database. We can also look into the MongoDB collection and I will talk about which client you need to access the MongoDB database. So we are already connecting to the MongoDB on this host. Here you can see we can just use this URL to connect to the MongoDB database. So either you do it from the container. Let's say if I try to do it from the container. So here is my container. Attach shell. And I can just use Mongo. Show DBs. And I can just use user management DB, right? And I can just show do show collections. And I think there is a operation db dot user schema dot find to read all the to read all the records. If I'm doing it correctly, it will return with the records. You can see these are the two records. Right. But what happens is nobody wants to do it from the terminal. What we can do is we can use a client to see what is the what are the records which has been inserted in this collection. Okay, so let's explore the client. I will just zoom in, zoom out, and uh, here we can exit from the container. We can see that this is how the data is being stored in the MongoDB. So, this is the tool I was talking about. It's a RoboMongo. Now it is a Robo 3T Studio. I mean, you install it and you create a new connection by clicking onto the plus, enter your URL, and this is how you can see the collection view and all sort of things it's it's like a visual representation of your your uh, mongodb collection you can just look into all the the collection records collections and all the columns and all the properties so you can see this is the database these are the collections and inside a collection because this is a json document it will give you the whole description and these are the methods which you can apply right in through this db dot uh, collection name dot find db dot collection name dot find one and all these queries you can perform through the mongodb uh, to the mongodb using uh, using this robo mongo client because mongodb is already running on the container we are connecting on 27017 port and we are doing query so you can just install it on your uh, system because here this is the client you can install it and use it forever and then you can just access these apis and so we have built a simple authentication API. We are going to build more complex API, complex system, complex APIs. Currently, this is a bare bone structure. We are not following any standard API structure and all. We are just uh, creating these simple uh, folders. And inside a static, you can actually render the static HTML files also if you want. Let's say inside a static, if I want to just put an index.html. Can I just do it? Then if I try to access the index.html here on the browser, so localhost 3005. Yes, you can see you got the simple form, registration form. And this registration form is using the same register API. I didn't write this code because there is no point of talking about it. It's a simple like exios, username, password, and then I'm passing it and is it is using the same api register okay it's auth register similarly there is a login i can just put the page you can render the login page also so it's a auth login let's try to see this 
okay use the name is hello data submit form something is undefined i need to check so i mean it is this is how it is creating the users okay i mean this is how we are we can just dispatch a simple action it's like a simple index.html simple login.html right login also it will render this login form for us when you hit a login and why that is happening because we are using this static pages middlewares so that's why we put these static files inside our static folder so that we can render those html files by putting the name on the url so this is like these html's are rendered from the the url so here i will just put demo hello or hello and i will submit form so you can see it is success that's the only demo right these are the here we are uh, this is how we are rendering the template submitting the data 